let's say a, a, a club has brought you in and um, whether they're performing at a really high level and they want to sustain success or perhaps that they've been um, struggling to, to, to perform and they're, and they're wanting help to, to get back on track. Are you sort of hoping when you're running that sort of activity that there'll be differing opinions when there is change that's, that's you know, ultimately wanting to happen? Are you you're sort of wanting different opinions? Or, and is that easier to work with in a sense when there is because then you've got some you know, something to work towards compared to if everyone just sort of rates, everyone rates at a seven or eight and has similar actionables. Yeah, talk us through those experiences, I guess. Yeah, I think it's good to have a mix of both. Like it's the yeah, attention is just so necessary in in high high performance, and I think it's necessary in any any kind of culture. It's if you want progress, there's no well, what's this what's the quote? I think it was Frederick Douglass said something along the lines of there there, there can be no progress without discomfort or something along those lines. If I was to paraphrase him, and um, I think that that those conversations, whilst they could be difficult. They're so necessary, and then it's well. Do we have a safe environment? You know, if if we pride ourselves on creating a culture where people can belong, where there's a kind of safety and openness in and around the opinions that we can share with one another, and there's a healthy level of challenge as well too. It sort of shouldn't be about the org chart and where you uh, are positioned in the hierarchy. You, know, you want to be able to sort of challenge up, challenge to the side, challenge down. You know, the sort of healthy circular type approach for athletes that want to make a bigger impact perhaps their pre-game speech with their peers or whatever it might be to inspire their teammates or, or or build that connection what are some some practical tips for for developing leaders to yeah to bring storytelling into their presentation skills i guess yeah well i, I think I do a lot of work with coaches and I encourage coaches and leaders to become story factories i feel like stories are the fabric of humankind you know they're what brings us together and you, you can have all the statistics and the facts and figures and data in the world the the most powerful person in the world is a storyteller and i i uh, i feel like that that notion of well i might have some complex information to communicate or i need to get a group from point a to point b one of the best ways you can do that is through stories. Collaboration and connection, if that's raised as an area that a club has identified is something that's you know, perhaps on that rating system, that the coaches, the the players, performance staff, yeah, medical, everyone's identified that as, a, as an area of growth. Uh, what are some, some common uh, methods that you've used or principles that you like to, that are quite effective in that space? Yeah, well, again, I, I don't think there's any off the shelf for that. It's, it's really <laughs> some things that you... Some things that work really well with one group or one team or one group of staff or players, it does, doesn't work with another group of staff or players. So I've probably given up trying to find the – I don't believe that there are any such thing as silver bullets and that's probably a principle that I use is that if you're trying to find the silver bullet, then you'll be, you'll be searching forever because it doesn't exist and I think that that's particularly true when it comes to that piece. But I think one thing – one thing that's really important is is just trying different things. So don't be afraid to experiment. If something works, you know, I think you do more of it potentially. And if something doesn't work, don't be afraid to just can it and move on to something else. That doesn't mean it's a failure. I think you, you sort of learn from the things that don't work as much as you learn from the things that do. Let's say those harder conversations or meetings, reviews, do you like to change the environment whether it be outdoors going for a walk or or do you feel like for those ones you do need to be inside in, in a meeting sort of more of a formal what's your take on that no i don't think you need to be inside at all i think sometimes the classroom environment office environment can can create a level of adversary that there's not necessary in and around conversation so even that notion of a desk in between us can sometimes be a barrier to us getting where we need to get to in the conversation. So that's where you see a lot of coaches experimenting with different layouts of their offices. Uh, I remember Chris Fagan, who, you know, I admire, I uh, still remember Fags coming and speaking to a group of NRL general managers of footy up in Queensland as part of a program that we were running for the NRL. And one of the things Fags talked about was when he first got to the Lions, he did away with, with his sort of desk and, and office chairs and brought in some couches and a coffee table and, and back then the Lions didn't have the greatest facilities, but he was really determined not to allow the players to use their facility as an excuse for for performance, the substandard performance. And he wanted to set an example for that through the way that he set his own office up. 
and and that was going to dictate the 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 way that he wanted to communicate with his players. For individuals that are looking to uh, improve their well being, improve their ability to lead, and, and make an impact, uh, what are some sort of key areas for creating that sort of best best self plan? You find to to ensure that sustainable sort of success, but also well being from a personal level. Yeah, uh, on it from an individual viewpoint, and that guy, like I think yeah. that that's really it's a really great question to ask and I feel that the starting point is what does my best self actually look like so when I'm at my best what what what, what does that look like and describe what that is you know how, how how do you structure your time where are you who's around you you know how do you feel what are the things you're doing to contribute towards that so and and then sort of starting with that and then weaving that into an affirmation of sorts that helps you kind of be a bit more focused on on what that what that looks like for you so that you can actually find a way to to bring it to life day after day and once you've created it it's going back to it on a regular basis i feel like sometimes we're always we do something and we have a an exercise or a reflection or we journal about something and then we want to move on to the next thing straight away (laughs) well i feel like sometimes going back over the same thing time and time again is a really powerful way of actually having it become embedded so it might be writing the same affirmation once a day for and just seeing how that goes